What's going on AFL Fantasy Freak fam? Welcome back to the channel. For those that are new around here, I'm Jacob aka the AFL Fantasy Freak. The first week of the buys are over guys and there was plenty of carnage, plenty of low scores so there's plenty to talk about. In this video I'm going to be going through what unfolded this week along with what my trades were, how my team fared, and then a little bit of some early trade insights and what guys I think you should be looking at this week. So enjoy the video. So as I stated in the intro guys, and I'm sure you guys are aware, there was plenty of injuries this week. The first one I'm going to talk about is one that might not be too fantasy relevant, but that's Andy McGrath. Last year my team name was called Andy McGrath's going to win me the car, purely because I had him early on. He was a great value pick. He's pretty pricey. I know a couple people jumped on at the start of the year, but not too many people have him, but the main reason I'm talking about him is purely for the relevance of another bloke in the team, which is Kyle Langford. He's been super the last few weeks, and with McGrath going out, I think Langford's role is all but confirmed that he should be playing inside mid from now on, which should see him score over 100 most weeks. He's priced at 660, but I think he's a great unique option. They do have the buy this week, so probably one to target after that, but he's certainly one that I'm very keen on, so I just thought I'd start the video off by mentioning that. As for some of the other guys, Dane Zorko, he's copped the one-week suspension, and Brizzy's come out and said that they're not going to be challenging this ban, so for Zorko owners, you've now got no Zorko over the next two weeks as he misses this week goes into the buy round 14, so that's a potential trade there. I will be looking into different trade scenarios, probably in another video this week. As for some of the other guys, Nathan Fife, obviously a stinger, um, 47 points plus the shoulder injury. Very doubtful that he'll get up for next week. It looked pretty bad. He was icing it up, so... And he has had the issues with that shoulder in the past. And then the main one is Sean Darcy. So Sean Darcy is a bloke that a lot of people jumped on this week. I originally did have him in my trade plans, but I last minute decided to reverse that as I didn't own Max Gorn. And I just thought that if I was to go to Sean Darcy, then I'd need to get Grundy and Gorn in the future. And it would just be too hard to... Manage. So I decided to go with Gorn last minute. Obviously, I dodged the bullet there, but plenty of people did trade Darcy in. So obviously, that's not ideal. I will be covering that in another video this week. So if you guys would like to see that, make sure to drop a like on this video. As for how my side went this week, we'll jump into the laptop. I'll show you guys what my team is currently looking like. So, not much has changed, obviously, with the three trades we had last week. But we'll start off in defense. Sam Doherty started off really slow, but got the job done. The main disappointment here is James Harms, 62 points. He did play quite a lot better than that, but he gave away quite a few free kicks. And he was just, it just wasn't his night. Plenty of times he ended up with the ball and there was a free kick downfield or a free kick off the play and he just missed out on a lot of opportunity throughout the game. So not too concerned there. He should bounce back next week. Thomas Highmore was pretty shit to be fair. He played two and a half quarters, almost three quarters, could only manage 21 They did play him up forward for a bit of the game. They played him in the ruck at one or two stoppages. Uh, so obviously played him out of position due to him just coming on. They weren't expecting to lose Wood, who was one of their key forwards. So 
I'm not sure what Highmore's job security looks like going forward. Clavellino was pretty poor. Some of their defenders weren't that great. So whether they bring him in to play in his actual role in defense next week, I'm not quite sure. They probably won't. They'll probably just drop him. So if we go into the midfield, my main uh, star this weekend, Darcy Parrish. I flicked the C on him two minutes before the game. I had the C on Zach Merritt, but I thought with how my round was going, I was tracking for a really poor score. So I decided to take a risk and go with a more unique captain option, which paid off absolutely huge, netted me 320 points, which is bloody fantastic. Uh, it makes up for Collier Dawkins, Ronan O'Connor, Jay Rantau, all scoring in the 20s. I did only have 19 on field this week, so I did have to take two of those scores. Uh, Max Gorn, stock standard. Riley O'Brien, I did expect him to go pretty good this week up against Max Lynch. If he couldn't manage 90 at least, then Jesus Christ. And then going forward, Devin Robertson smashed it out of the park and Isaac Heaney was pretty disappointing, but... Having owned him for three weeks now, I did get the 84 and the 135. I think 80 is around where he's going to be. So hopefully we see a bounce back from him next week. He's still going to keep making money, which is nice. In terms of how I scored, I scored 1676, I believe. And that was an okay score. Going into this round, I was planning for this round to be my worst round of the three, going through the buy periods. I did slip in rank slightly, but only about 20 spots. I'm ranked 246 currently. So with most sides looking like they might struggle over the next two weeks, whereas I'm going to be in a pretty strong position I think that I'm in a great spot to potentially crack that top 100 by the end of the buys and then progress forward towards the end of the year, hopefully get myself in a position where I can chase winning the car. With the trades this week, guys, I think that there's plenty of options. Obviously, you want to be chasing guys coming off their buy. These are going to be the priority targets and... After last week, we actually do look like we have quite a few genuine rookie downgrade options, which is always nice as well. So we'll quickly cover some of those guys. I think Reeves is going to be the number one target. He's break even, super nice. He's coming off the buy. So when we talk about some of these other guys in a second, he's the only one that's going to play for the next two weeks. So that's a super positive but he does still need to get named this week. So obviously just wait for the team sheets there, but he looks like the number one option. You are paying slightly more, but I think it'll be worth it. I think he's got the best job security going forward. Amadi for Sydney looked fantastic on the weekend, showed lots of ability. His aerial work was fantastic. He showed a bit in the ruck, and I think that Sydney going forward especially with Hickey having problems with that PCL. I think that they're going to opt to play Amadi over Sinclair. Sinclair has proven now over the past however many years that he's pretty useless. So Amadi looks like a pretty solid option in my opinion. Both the West Coast boys in Edwards being Luke Edwards, the midfielder, and Luke Foley, I think are both good options too. Plenty of depth issues at West Coast. Plenty of midfielders out. Shepard going down with concussion strengthens Foley's case. I think both should be able to score pretty well, so I think they're both great options. And then the other guy is Max Lynch. Played pretty much sole ruck. Did have slight chop-outs with Darcy Cameron, but he was the main guy in there. He will be coming up against Max Gorn this week, and then... You'd think Grundy comes back after the bye, and I'm highly doubtful that they'll really shift him forward. They'll probably just go back to playing that Darcy Cameron and um, Brody Grundy combo. So his job security is pretty poor, which is why I probably wouldn't consider him, although he did look pretty good on the weekend. As for my trades, my early trade looks, what I'm looking to do... 
as I stated earlier, round 12 guys are the ones to target. I've got plenty of cash saved up. And I'm going to take a risk this week, I think. I don't have too much carnage to deal with, and I should get close to 20 pretty comfortably. So I'm pretty free in what moves I can do. I will be looking to upgrade, but the main controversial trade that I am looking to do is I'm looking to trade Darcy Parrish out. So hear me out here, guys. My reasoning being is he just is so much value. He's almost 900k now, and going forward, I think teams are going to have to start looking at tagging him potentially. His next few matchups, he's got Melbourne, Geelong, who are two tough teams, and Hawthorne. Hawthorne have been known to tag using Cousins and Warpool at times. Geelong, if they get O'Connor back, or they could use another player to target Parrish. And then Melbourne, who are using Harms as well to tag. So I think he's got some tough games. I don't know if he can keep the scoring up. So I don't know if he's worth holding at that price. So I'm looking to go him to Whitfield, who I think can arguably average the same, but that trade nets me 130K. And it also gets me a top line player who's also a captain option, who's going to play over the next two weeks. And then with my next two trades, I'm looking to go Devin Robertson up to Houston, who I think is a great value premium. And then... James Jordan up to Ollie Wines. Wines is pretty fully priced in my opinion, but he's unique and that's what I'm looking for is some point of difference players that can potentially set me aside from these top 50, top 100 coaches, which is also something going into my thought process in why I'm looking to trade Parrish out. Also, a lot of these top sides do own Parrish. They're at the top because they've had that ride up there. They've had that 135 average over the last five weeks or so. So that's my early trade looks for this week, guys. As per usual, I'll have the trade guide out. I'll have all my thoughts, all my information regarding what targets I think are best this week. If you've enjoyed the video, make sure to drop a thumbs up. If you want to see more AFL fantasy content, subscribe to the channel, guys. And until next time, keep climbing up the ranks. Look, I'm about my plaid, bitch. I'm decked up on blue bills. And I won't stop until the cash pit look like fall leaves in the bag fill. Tell her out of my face if she coming with that bullshit. Quit to save my peace. I'm so after school special. She